Welcome to the FRP Analysis Calculator app tutorial. My name is Dr. Aladdin and I'm a Senior Engineering Software Developer with IDA LLC. In this tutorial I will walk you through the FRP Analysis Calculator, highlighting all features that are possible to apply. The main purpose of this software is to perform flexural analysis for reinforced concrete, rectangular beams strengthened with FRP sheets or plates. As you can see, the main interface is divided into four main sections. The first section is for the material, material properties input, the second is the geometrical properties, the third is the process, and the fourth one is for the results. First, we start by setting the system of units to either US customer units or SI units. The US units will be in case I and inches. The SI units is in megapascal and millimeter. Upon switching from US units to SI units or vice versa, all inputs will be updated accordingly. The first section on the left is dedicated to the material properties. It's divided into three subsections, the concrete section, the steel section, and the FRP section. Starting by the concrete section, we have the maximum compressive strength, which is the uniaxial compressive strength F prime C. It could be in KSI or megapascal. We have the modulus of elasticity. We have the tensile strength. We have the strain at the maximum compressive stress known as epsilon prime C. And we have the maximum compressive strain at crushing epsilon CU. For example, we can go ahead and put for the maximum compressive strength uh, 4 case I. And then we will have the option to use the ACI default for our modulus of elasticity and the tensile strength and epsilon prime C and epsilon CU, or we can use our own numbers. Using the ACI default, we'll just apply the ACI formulas and equation, the latest. Uh, ACI equations for these parameters. Moving down to the steel, we have the longitudinal steel and the transverse steel. Since this is a, flect a flexural design, the transverse steel is not, uh, is not useful into the calculation. However, it's used here for the future development of this piece of software. In the longitudinal steel parameters, we have the yielding strength, Fy, and the modulus of elasticity, Es similar for the transverse steel. We can use 60 KSI for FY and 29,000 for ES for both of them. Moving down to the FRP, the user has the option either use a user-specified FRP material and that case he will be is he the user is required to input the modulus of elasticity the maximum strain, the type, and the exposure condition. The modulus of elasticity could be around 14,000 and the epsilon Fu, this is the strain, and the type the user choose between carbon, glass, or aramid, and for the exposure, interior exposure, exterior exposure, or aggressive environment. Another option that we have in this software is that the, we have some manufacturer embedded into the software. For example, we have some beta company and for each company that we have on the software they have a series of products. For each product we, we deliver the description of this product, the modulus of elasticity, in KSI and megapascal and the maximum tensile strain and the design thickness and the type. If the user choose to go with this product it will be reflected automatically to the main interface. Let's go with the user specified and we use our numbers 14,000 KSI for the modulus of elasticity 0.011 for the maximum strain 
and carbon and interior exposure. Next, we can move on to the geometrical properties. In the first part of the geometrical properties, the user should input the cross-sectional width, the cross-sectional height, the clear cover, and the ties bar diameter or the stirrups diameter. Let's go with a rectangular section, a width of 6 inch, 12 inch, a clear cover of 1 inch, and 0.33 for the ties bar diameter. The next part of the geometrical properties is, is the longitudinal steel details. The user have the option to insert the bar number for the steel or the bar diameter if he has the US units activated. If he has the SI units, the insert bar diameter is, all the, is the only option that's activated. Let's go back with the US units. And we have up to five layers of longitudinal steel. For each layer, we have the number of bars, the bar diameter, and the layer depth. We can go with two layers and the first layer will have two bars and it's a number three and let's say it's a depth of two inches from the top and the second layer is also two bars and bar number is five and the layer depth let's say it's a ten inch from the top the FRP geometrical properties is the number is the number are the number of layers and the layer width, the layer thickness, and the soffit strain at strengthening known as epsilon bi. The number of layers could be one, two, any whole number. Let's use one layer and the layer width will be equal to the cross-sectional width as a six inch and the layer thickness could be 0 0.08 inches and the soffit strain at strengthening something like 0 0.0004 at this stage the user have inserted all the required inputs for the analysis these inputs could be saved through the file tab and the save feature I'm going to save my mine under a tutorial folder in the desktop under the name case A and save it Moving to the process, the first button is the submit inputs. The submit input button will run a series of checks on the inputs the user have inserted and make sure they make sense and plot the cross section. The cross section concrete is in gray, the longitudinal steel is in red, and the transverse steel is in uh, black and the FRP at the soffit of the beam is green. Clearing the inputs will clear all the, all the panels that we have and clear all the inputs. Going through with the analysis, the first thing that you notice is the failure mode. As in our case, it's a debonding of FRP. On the right hand side in the results section, you will find the strain profile plotted in this in this panel. Positive number require uh, means compression, and negative number means tension. A series of information will be delivered at the bottom of that section, as the nominal moment, the unstrengthened moment, the strengthened moment, the reduction factor, and the ultimate moment as well as the maximum compressive strain, the compression depth, and the maximum steel strain, the FRP debonding strain, the maximum strain for the FRP, the effective strain, and the centroid of the compression stress factor, as well as the FRP depth and the failure mode. At this stage, the user has the option to report as a PDF 
I'm going to save mine in the same tutorial folder under report X. I'm going to save this version as a PDF version. Also, I'm going to save a screenshot of my case as an image X and I'm going to save it. Going to the tutorial folder, you can see that I have I have the input folder, I have the image, and I have the report.